I started milling down some rustic walnut and maple that I had picked up several months ago. And for this project, I didn't exactly have a clear idea in mind as to what I wanted to build or how I wanted to build it. I just knew that this was a cool looking wood and I wanted to do something a little bit different with it. I do apologize for the uh, amount of time lapse you're going to see. Um, there was a lot more recording than I had anticipated and wanting to try and figure out how to show as much as possible and still have something that didn't turn out to be an hour and a half or two hours long. Um, you're going to see a lot of my backside, unfortunately, because, well, what I thought was going to be a good camera angle turned out to not be. So I will be adjusting things and working on that and trying to figure out things as, as I go. But with everything else that I'm doing, this is turning out to be a little bit of a learning curve with uh, finding camera angles, what's going to allow you to see what's going on, how to zoom in, how to zoom out. But I'm sure I'll get that figured out and produce something that will be a little more fun and enjoyable to look at. I've had this planer for a number of years and it has made a big difference with a lot of my uh, woodwork and saved me a lot of time and money as well. All of these boards are being uh, planed down to three quarter inch and some of them have already been glued up to uh, make the panels that I needed to make. Some of them, um, some of the wood didn't need to be uh, glued up. Um, All of the uh, wood was um, cut down and the panels were glued up previously. Um, I started to record that but realized very quickly that I didn't have a very good camera angle on it and it just wasn't going to work. Um, here I am using my router to cut out the rabbits that are going to be used to uh, form the outside of the carcass and uh, build the box that everything else is going to be built in. Um, not paying attention to what I was doing, I realized I actually cut them a little bit too deep and it changed how I was going to build it. Instead of having a double rabbit for the sides and the top and bottom, it just ended up being a single rabbit. Um, And here's a little bit of the sanding process I went through. Uh, it turned out that I had a little over eight hours of just sanding that was recorded. I didn't think you wanted to see every bit of that, um, but I did include some of it. Um, and you'll see me constantly changing hands and adjusting where my router is and how I'm, how I'm uh, handling the router just because of issues with my shoulders and having to make sure that I'm not overstressing one shoulder over the other at any given time. Now I'm setting up a, I'm test fitting the box, making sure that I've got everything set properly. Just putting in the uh, dividers, putting in the, the portions for the shelves. That way I can be able to mark where I need to cut the boards out for the hidden dados and just making sure that I've got everything lined up right and I've got everything set to a 90 degree angle on the outer portion of the cabinet. And here I'm using the router to cut out the dados that everything is going to sit in. Uh, because I wanted to do the hidden dado using the dado blade on my table saw was not an option. Because I had to have a, a stop point uh, for the dado on both, both the top and the bottom. So that I could be able to 
cut down the the dividers and the shelves so you wouldn't actually see the dado from the front. I think the next time that I do something of this nature though, I'm going to work with a sliding dovetail to attach those in just because I think it might give a little more stability and uh, look a little bit better uh, with how everything ended up being laid out. And I also realized that this is also where I mismeasured a couple things and didn't quite plan um, appropriately for this section of shelving. I was supposed to have them wide enough to be dadoed into the side of the cabinet plus the inside of the divider, but I realized too late that I had actually cut those just a little bit too short. I'm not sure this is the best way to cut the wood out for the hidden dados um, or to slip into the dados but it's kind of how I chose to try this um, I'm not I think the next time that I need to do this I'm going to set up a jig in a little bit different manner something that's a little more stable and something that doesn't uh, makes me feel a little more comfortable with doing it this way um, using the hand saw is not always um, easy for me, but I do have a pole saw that I use uh, for some of this, which you'll see as well. I'm just cleaning up the cuts with the the, the edges for the uh, insert with the pull saw and a chisel, just trying to get them a little bit uh, cleaner, a little more straight, and just make sure that they're going to fit in the way I want them to and uh, 
be able to match up to what needs to be set. Um, here I'm cutting in a dado for the divider that will be for where I store the uh, drawing pads that I use. I've got everything glued up. I didn't show that portion on camera. Um, I had intended to, but it turned out again, I was recording everything from my backside and most of what I did was actually hidden. So that will be adjusted on my next video. Right now, I am getting the legs for the cabinet uh, set, uh, tested, seeing if what I ha have in mind is going to work and figuring out where I'm going to fit them so I can get them cut at the exact angles that I need for the legs.
here you can see the legs have been glued together. I used dowels to hold the foot to the leg, just give a little more strength, a little more rigidity, and be able to provide the stability that I wanted for the shelf. I wasn't sure if this leg design was going to work, but it was something I wanted to try and see if I could uh, make get it to uh, have the stability I want. I also used dowels to attach the legs to the side of the cabinet. Uh, they're not pushed all the way through. They're only about halfway through the these slabs. And Now I'm starting the fun process of cutting up all the pieces I need for the drawers that I'm going to be inserting into the middle of the cabinet. Um, I wasn't sure how many I wanted. I knew I needed at least four. I have two that are uh, four inches th uh, deep and then two that are two inches deep. One for uh, pencils, pens, and one for the uh, some of the templates, uh, protractor, compass, stuff of that nature. The other two are going to be for miscellaneous. I am designing uh, one of the drawers to have slots in it that I can be able to use to insert pencils, uh, more or less a um, diagonal pencil holder. And this kind of worked the way I wanted it to, but it also didn't work the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to have to rethink my design on this one. I'm probably end up building a different drawer to be able to accommodate the pencils as I was planning. Um, it, um, I think it's a really cool idea. I just have to set it up just a little bit differently. I use box joints to join all of the, the backs and the sides together. Uh, each of the sides and backs is made out of the solid um, black walnut. And I just use an eighth inch plywood that I had for the drawer bottoms. There was about a two week gap between getting the carcass put together and starting on the drawers. Part of that was due to weather. Uh, we had some extremely cold weather came in that even with the heater in my garage, it was barely able to get it to 58, 59 degrees. And that's just a little bit too cold for me to feel comfortable working in the garage and, and really doing anything at all for any length of time. The other problem I had was finding the drawer slides I wanted. Everything I've got right now are the heavy duty ones where the drawer slides are an inch and a half or two inches tall. And that just wasn't going to work for, for what I have in mind. So what I ended up finding are these mini drawer slides that are designed for jewelry boxes. 
And I think it's going to work out quite well because I'm not putting anything of any major weight. They have a 22 pound weight limit on it, which should be more than sufficient for this cabinet. Um, I just ended up ordering a couple different sets because one was too long, the other was too short, and these turned out to be just about right. So between the order time and delivering them and waiting for the weather to warm up enough to where I could get the garage at this point to be between about 62 and 64 degrees, um, it took a little bit longer than what I had anticipated. These drawer sizes were a little bit different than what I had worked with in the past too. These had a screw for the front, but on the back or depending on which way you oriented them, the other um, the other hole for them was actually a small machinist uh, bolt that you screwed into the uh, into the rail to provide the the second support point for this. Because of my lack of planning with this, I really should have put these in first and then put the back of the cabinet on. I, it put me in a position where I found it was actually easier to put these drawer slides in backwards and have the bolt that goes into the uh, slide in the back of the drawer instead of the front. Um, this is going to also going to come back to backfire a little bit here in a few minutes and you'll see what I mean.
And about now is where I realized I, I kind of miscalculated. Um, these drawer slides do not separate. They are captive. They are one piece. So you don't have the ability to actually pull anything, pull them apart like you do with some of the, some of the larger drawer slides. And I realized about this time, I have to figure out how to get the top drawer slides in. And what I was originally planning wasn't going to quite work. I think the next time I do a project like this um, with smaller drawers, I'm going to forgo the drawer slides completely and just do wooden slides for these. I did find a way to get this top drawer mounted because of the lack of room I had to work with and the fact that the back was already closed off. Um, it felt like a little bit of acrobatics work, but I was able to get something finagled with really odd angles to get these, get that top drawer slide uh, mounted, get the drawer in, and then put the other drawers back in. Um, the entire process of figuring this part out, I probably took the two larger drawers out of the cabinet and off the hinges probably five or six times I was trying to get everything figured out. And um, it would be nice to avoid this next time.
And finally, all the drawers are in place and I can start working on the drawer fronts. I wanted to do something a little bit different, a little more you know, instead of just putting on um, the drawer poles that you simply just drill a hole into the front of the drawer and attach them with a bolt through the back. I wanted something that was going to be a little more refined, a little bit different. So I cut out these drawer handles and uh, made them out of uh, some of the uh, scrap uh, walnut that I had using a um, coving bit that I have for my router. I uh, cut both sides to give it a little bit of an indent for top and bottom and cut them down to the length that I wanted and then routed out the front of the face uh, about uh, halfway through the quarter inch face so that I could be able to have the handles hard set into it. And here you'll see that I decided to use dowels to actually attach the door front to the drawer. Just because I wanted something a little bit different, I didn't want to have any screws coming through the back. Partially, it was a little bit too difficult to put screws in on a couple of the drawers just because of how small they are and the lack of room I have to work with. And I wanted something to better secure the drawer faces and just give a little bit of a highlight to it. So I took some of the scrap uh, walnut that I have, cut it into 3 8 inch dowels, drilled out the, the holes in the faces, and then flush cut the uh, dowels to match and give you the uh, pattern that you have for the uh, more of like a button in the front of the drawers. And now I'm just finishing up everything with uh, the Rubio Monocoat and getting it all nice and coated and buffed out and ready to go. And here's the finished cabinet. Uh, all four drawers and dividers and everything else. That skinny one on the end though, that is actually to hold my T-square, a couple of my rulers and be able to have them hanging up. And there is a temporary um, cover for the bottom of each of the drawers. I'm going to be pulling those out eventually and putting in felt. Um, that way I have something just to line the bottom. But thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.